I realized what they spent their money on because I was doing the, the bookkeeping yeah, yeah, yeah. was SEO, branding, oh. uniform. And that was just, it blew my mind, you know, from old school restaurant game. And I seen this guy spend so much money on Google Analytics and, yeah. you know, keyword strategies and um, paid ads. And, I'm, and this was before the whole social media blow up. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where I realized SEO was king. So just to stop you there, because <coughs> yeah. of the listeners, can you explain what SEO is for people? So SEO is search engine optimization. Yeah. Um, it's the way when you look through Google and how you rank when you, when you search, for example, <coughs> pizza, pizza in Camden Town. And organically or through paid, you would be ranked based on how well you are on your website or how much you paid through P- PPC pay-per-click. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, cool. yeah. So this guy, he, he would pay for terms like... Re, um, refuse removal, or rubbish clearance, or whatever, and he'll, he'll generate leads that way. People will find his website, see it's a nice, snazzy website, very cool, very clear, easy pricing. Then they call that phone number, they pick up that phone, that brand is then carried on through that conversation. Yeah. Then you book him in, boom, that's it. You know, and then I, I saw how much he was growing very fast, and a lot of it was through these PPCs and, and SEOs. And I'm at that point, I'm thinking, you know, I'm like. I'm not really, and he even told me at one point, man, Omar, you're not really an accountant, what are you doing <laughs> working for me as an accountant? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, you know, well, this is, this is interesting to me. So at that point, next to Bintang, the old family business, mm-hmm. a kebab shop was available. Yeah. And I think it was about two years into this job, I realized, you know, this isn't for me. And I still love food. I still want to do something. Yeah. And when I found out this was available, I thought, you know what, let me just kind of do something. And I had to think of the concept. And all, if it was another location, it would have been another Bintang, straight up. Oh, okay, yeah. All because right? you're a franchise, essentially. Yeah, well, it's just what I know, yeah. you know? So because, because it was right next to the family business, my dad's restaurant, I had to think of another cuisine that wouldn't compete with his. <laughs> and it was, at that point, I really got into Caribbean food and, and I, I did more research and then, you know, uh, Latin food was hot as well. And I realized, you know what, they share a lot of the same ingredients. You know, plantain, rice and beans, rice yeah, and beans, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, the stews. And, and I thought, you know what, let me, let me see if I could come up with a concept. And, and that's how Guanabana came about. Oh, okay. You know, and it was probably one of his first in his kind of like Latin Caribbean halal restaurants in, the, in, in London. Yeah. Um, and a, a big reason why I called it Guanabana was because Guanabara was really hot back then. Oh, so that's and why. That's why. That's, that's why, why you keep it say, yeah, because right, people why. still do that now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they they go in Guanabara. They they look for Guanabara on it, and then we will come up. Oh. You know, and I wanted to get that accidental traffic. Them checking up our website and thinking, oh, what? And we will get a lot of bookings who who people thought they were going to hit one, but because they liked the menu, they liked the pictures, and they thought, okay, let's follow through. It's yeah. actually better. Cool. So I think when it comes, so from what you're saying, it sounds like you've really mastered optimizing the search engines because on the before our interview I was doing research and I was trying to find out what Mama Sons means just because you know um, Michael Jackson got that song Mama Say Mama Say Mama so I thought it had something to do with that you know what I mean so I wanted to type out what the word actually means so I write what does it mean and then your rest like your ice, ice cream parlor came at the top of the search and I was yeah. thinking if I'm searching for a definition why would his business be coming up but yeah. I just thought okay maybe it's not a popular word but I yeah. realized that that's no it's a big part of our <laughs> Okay. SEO is big. I mean, a lot of people don't use it now, and and, and Instagram is their world. Yeah. All right, but SEO is, is big for what we do, you know. Oh. So that was always like something we focused on from the start. Oh, you know? I see. So, yeah. So you were saying, so you named it that, yeah? Yeah, we named it. I mean, if you were thinking of names, and guanabana is actually a fruit um, in, in the Caribbean, they call it sarasop. And in the oh, Philippines, sarasop, they call yeah. it goyabano, you know. But it's a fruit that's also indigenous to South America, but also the Caribbean. Oh, so and the merge of the two merge. And because there wasn't much competition for that word and the similarities to that place that was popping, you know, so it, it all played it all played a part in what we named it, you know, so. So you were very strategic about branding the business before you'd even launched I, I, this, I, that whole world came to me because I, I was an accountant for this guy for, for, it was a junk clearance company, yeah. you know, and he, he smashed it. He just grew and grew and grew and grew and then, um, that was, yeah. When, when I thought about opening up Guanabana and I could use those tools he did, tap into a demographic which was, you know, was, was you know, craving halal Caribbean food, halal steak food, halal steaks, halal burgers, 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking as, as a consumer myself, what am I going to be searching for? Yeah. You know, so, um, and we use those key to, keyword strategies all the time and we still do now, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a lot more expensive now. Back then it was a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it there early. Yeah, yeah it so it was, it was one of these things where it, it kind of uh, uh, attracted a lot of people. Even like we started Shisha for a while because Shisha was, you know, it's 12 years old now, but Shisha back then was still popping and I think at the start of it and everyone was looking for shisha joints, you know? Yeah. And they, you know, when people used to have the desserts, they're like, oh, where, where can I go for shisha afterwards? And that spot, that place at the back. Yeah, yeah. So they used to ask me that. I'm like, okay, why do they want to go? I mean, they look on their phone look for shisha places in Camden. I'm like, okay, we've got to do this, you know? Wow. So that's how it kind of evolved from there. I'm so impressed by the marketing because everything you're saying to me now, I've seen, because the reason I found out about your restaurant is yeah. simply because it's Eid, we all want to go out for somewhere, but yeah. halal, some, we need to have halal food, the parents want to eat this much, so it was kind of like, where's the best place to go? And your restaurant kept on coming up because we're all Africans, you know what I mean? We like Caribbean, we like whole, 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 wholesome food, and it yeah, was yeah. like halal restaurants, and everyone kept saying, check out this place in Camden, and that was the first time we went there, and ever since then, like the rest has been history. Whenever we go somewhere as a family, yeah. it's always one of the first spots because we know it caters. Yeah. So, so even, I, I want to talk to that, about that concept of marketing towards niches, but before we get to there, yeah. how do you start up a restaurant? Like how much does it cost? Where do you get the investment from? How do you begin that journey into starting the restaurant? For specifically restaurants, the way it works, you gotta find the premises first, and it's either gonna be an empty shell, or it's gonna be a restaurant that you, that's already operating, you might wanna, they wanna close up and, and leave, and you'll, you'll, buy, you'll buy at a premium. So it'll be either a nil premium from a landlord, or at a premium. Yeah. And the premium will be dictated by the, the fixed assets they have left there. Um, if you're gonna be still using the name, the, the goodwill, you know, um, how long the lease is, if there's a good, good amount of time of the lease. Oh, okay. So like right now, there's a lot of restaurants closing down. Yeah. You know, and you know, but on the other spectrum, there's a lot of restaurants st smashing it even more than they used to because, you know, the leisure, the leisure pound, what you're competing with, no one's going out raving no more or concerts, so they're going out to eat, which is kind of like the most Which is okay, yeah, because, yeah, because you can't... So if you're doing well, so you know, and you want to grow, now's the time to grow, yeah. you know, because a lot of people who, who aren't making, who kind of didn't, you know, do too well beforehand, are not going to do well now, Yeah. you know? So, um, you could get a few deals right now. So if me, I'm starting a restaurant now, you know, I'm modest, you know, a modest um, capital, you know, I want to start a restaurant, how much would I be looking at, like? Okay, so recently, I, I was, I've been looking at uh, restaurants with 10-year leases, um, wanted to jump ship, so it's operating already, so you have to do a, um, you'll take over their lease, their existing lease. Um, they're asking offers of around 30 to 40,000 for a premium. Okay, and you'll get the whole, you get everything that's in there, that's their fixtures and furnishings and everything else. So if you want, you, you, all you need to do, if you're gonna have, have a concept that's similar to what they have, what they have already, and you don't have to change too much equipment, you know, 30, 40 grand, say 50 oh, grand, including, you know, your capital allowances and working capital and um, sign changes and whatever. 50 grand is usually what you would, and that's right now, but before, maybe 100 grand. Oh, now, really? So, yeah. so the price has gone, so, so are we in a recession? So it means that it's cheaper now. We just meant Well, a lot of people want to go. They want to leave, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to pay the next quarters of rent or VAT bill that's coming up. And they'll rather just say, take over my business so I could get out of it. And it's, it's being able to put your ear to the ground and, and find out who these people are, you know? So that's why you have to be in it, you know? Right now, because I'm in this situation, a lot of times people come up to me and, and these opportunities come. And, but before it was pretty, you know, no one knew who the hell I was. And, you know, yeah. I'll have to call up people and I'll pass by a shop, I see a sign. I'll pass by a shop, I see being closed for two days. I'll, I'll take a photo of it, call up, send an email, and. I'll change I'm the one of the restaurants I, I picked up through Rama Ramen three years ago. Yeah. I, I walked past it and, and it, 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 you know, the current tenants there, they weren't doing too well. And I could see that. Um, I went to go eat there, just start talking to the owner. And, and I don't want to, like, I don't want to insult him or anything. Like, I'm not going to be there, like, I want to buy your restaurant. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, this is a lovely space. I love what you've done here. This is incredible. Um, you know, if there's anything you need from me, take my phone number and, uh, and we swap details and that was it. And I, I called him, you know, I messaged him saying, you know, thanks again for the delicious dinner. Um, we're, we're looking to expand. If you ever decide that you want to, no, I don't want to insult you. If you ever decide you want to 
you know, go other way and, or try something different, please consider me in the future. But thank you. I, I just love your, your, what you do, you know? And that was it. 